Well, hey guys, it's Michael here. I'm pretty excited about this. This is probably part one of maybe a 10 part series of building an articulating tractor dump truck. I wanted to do this for like three years ago, but finally started on it recently. We're going to be utilizing all Subaru Legacy running gear. So this is going to be all wheel drive. It's going to be articulated so it can pivot and turn in the center. And uh, we're going to be repowering it with a Predator 420cc 13 horsepower motor from Harbor Freight. Pretty excited about it. We're going to be running a little jack shaft on the side here with some stage of hydraulic pumps, maybe an extra alternator on here. So we'll need a hydraulic pump for steering and probably chain up a secondary one for the hydraulic dump on here. Utilizing power steering pumps and things like that to kind of keep it uh, you know, budget friendly. We're also utilizing that new $1,500 CNC table I have to cut all the bracketry, which has really been helpful in the shop. So if you guys enjoyed the video, please hit like and subscribe so you can get notifications as a new part unfolds of the series. All right, guys, enjoy the video. So basically right here what I'm doing is I'm kind of determining the actual width of the wheels, how wide the machine's going to be. I want the finish size to be 48 to 50 inches wide. Figuring out transmission lengths, right here I'm checking out uh, bell housing, bolt pattern size. And really for me to kind of grapple one of these projects like this, i got to kind of determine where the frame's going to be, where the transmission's going to sit in that frame, how much higher is it going to sit in the hubs, and just start making notes like that. And one thing I need to do is go to the store and get the motor so I could determine where that was going to sit in the frame. So here I'm at Harbor Freight picking out the motor. All right, there it is. Gonna pick this bad boy up for the dump truck. <laughs> is that what that is? The stoner model? <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that thing rolling out. <laughs> <laughs> so the next stop after loading this engine up is we're going to head out to my work where I previously ordered uh, some 2x4 box tubing earlier in the week. I think it was about $120 for this 20 foot stick. Cutting in some 5 foot sections for the main frame rails for the front of the frame. So both of these are going to be the front section that's going to house the engine and transmission in it five feet long probably six inches longer than i need it to be but still in the planning stages and five feet should be a safe number for me to work around <laughs> <laughs> got a little plumber's crack action <laughs> all right got the front bar rail cut now we're gonna get a little bit bigger scrap for the back some salvage something for the articulating uh, joint to go through good and guess what <laughs> all right you guys got the motor sitting on a bucket here got the frame kind of mocked up this is kind of the way it works for me when it's such a big project to take on i kind of got to break it up in components but there's a lot of things that need to fall into place first to make sure i get some alignment right before i start tack welding some brackets on and stuff i'm um, just mainly trying to figure out how much clearance i need for the front of the frame to the motor and to the transmission these are all just rough ballpark uh, guesstimations here. But anyways, I cut this little bracket the other day. This is actually cut on some 16 gauge, really thin stuff. So mainly I'm just kind of figuring out the placement of um, the front of the frame, transmission, engine, rough placement. So there it is. Let's fill you on what I got going here. I got two saw horses set up here. And of course it's concrete floor. Most floors are never really level. So I got them shimmed up. So they level in all directions. It's a good reference point of foundation so I can level off of other parts of the build and know that the platform the frame sits on is completely level. I had that one frame rail run alongside the engine and transmission to kind of roughly get the ballpark where I want to start tacking on brackets and space and everything. These are cut to five feet. I went a little on the long side. I think I probably could have got away with four and a half feet. But I just figured when it comes down to the back by the transmission, I'd rather have a little more room to snake in shafts in the frame there than less and deal with the struggle. So it might be a hair on the long side, but hey, I've never done this before, so I'm working with it. I got all the stuff written on here where I have the layout for the frame, engine start, engine stop, PTO, transmission, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to actually just transfer these lines to the other frame rail here and space this thing out again and start tacking some of these parts together here. Figure out how to uh, put this thing together. The 
this first weld represents the first weld of this whole project here. Pretty exciting. All right, you guys, stop by my local fabrication shop. They usually give me uh, free metal through their scrap bin. But some of the bigger remnants and more valuable remnants I buy. I bought uh, this metal for about 60 bucks the other day. Got a few more freebies, some bigger angle iron out of the scrap bin as well. But I got some 16 gauge, probably go thinner next time. I just found these little scraps, two sheets of that and two sheets of 3 16 And I cut this out the other day and this is why I got the thin stuff to mainly just kind of test some true and make sure the stuff fits on the frame like usual. And I updated the design and had more uh, height between the frame and the holes. And I forgot to put a 45 on here. So I'd rather make it out of a uh, small thin metal and scrap metal for test pieces to make sure things fit properly and I'm going to go back through and cut these now so these are going to actually mount off of the frame here and get welded on with some gussets in 3 16 version and it's going to be hangers for where the original struts used to go on the, the wheels and hubs so I'm going to get cutting those next. Alright got that uh, strut plate ready to cut here I got to cut two of these per side and some more gussets so we're going to fire up the plasma torch here and cut these out. God, I love that little machine. I know this sounds ridiculous, but the amount of time this thing saves me to be able to duplicate these parts, I gotta cut four of these things. It's like having a helper in the shop. I know it sounds stupid, but I don't have to run the drill press on here. I don't have to run the angle grinder. Look at these cuts. I'll bring you guys in. I'll have to refocus the camera. These cuts turn So the beauty of having a CNC machine finally is uh, to be able to lay out your parts like this. This is four inches and this is two inches. This is four by two box beam. So you know it kind of helps with your layout. I got some marks on here. You drop this on. I got a 45 cut for a gusset. That will sit on there and square everything up. I got another gusset for a spacer in here. And put the other plate on and the strut should be able to mount up on here for one of the two strut mounts. Pretty cool. So here I'm getting ready to lay out some of my first parts on the frame here. This is actually the hanger that's going to hold the original hub to the original strut mount. There's no struts on here anymore, so this is actually going to be hanging it. And uh, anyways, I'm using a super dirt cheap uh, carpentry uh, speed square. You can get them for like three, four bucks. And I use this thing all the time for welding. It's just key. One of those things, you want to make sure to tack weld stuff. You don't want to go crazy on welding the hell out of everything. Because in case you find that a part's not positioned right, it's a lot easier to grind and break it off and then uh, if you had it completely welded and uh, just pay attention to your layout you know it's a kind of like your foundation if you don't get that right everything on the top of that's not going to be aligned very well so just take your time and uh, make sure that you get your layout right and you'll be a lot happier in the long run all right i'm super happy how that uh, strut mount turned out i'm going to go back to plasma torch and cut out the other one i just got it all tack weld in case i gotta grind anything off and reposition but pretty happy how that is i still need to make the other mount right off the old steering knuckle location that comes up to here and mounts it but i'm pretty happy about that so far so there you go got the other side all cut it's like a kit pretty awesome it's super neat to be able to load a few different codes in there cut these pieces out super efficiently one of the last cnc videos i did i had somebody griping about it saying there's no way it could cut accurate cuts because the boom is only supported on one side when it moves up and down the gantry and the funny thing is, you can stack these parts on top of each other and the holes are lined up perfect, the edges are perfect. It's pretty damn accurate, but some people always like to gripe. Now, I have to say, that was cut in about 40 seconds or less. Do you think anybody could possibly cut this out with an angle grinder or a bandsaw and drill those two holes in 40 seconds? I don't think so.
screw this part up and we'll see how it fits. So these components I'm welding on here are actually going down to the original ball joint location that was uh, part of the steering components. And I'm just locking them out and gussing it up so the front end is really solid. And if you ever get up against a stump or anything, it's not going to buckle over. It's going to be nice and strong. All right, just got these pieces cut out for the other side um, to kind of lock out the steering on the ball joint mount. But making good use out of this first sheet of metal. Not gonna be much left when I get done with this thing. It's just gonna be a few little bars. So I got all the parts cut and some gusses cut for this side and got this side tack welded on here. So the whole drop down for the running gear and the front wheels are pretty much finished other than finalizing all the welds. Had my dad come down to help me lift this uh, transmission into here and shim it up. Surprisingly, it doesn't look that heavy, but it's pretty heavy transmission. Uh, we got it leveled, we got it centered. It's just exactly where I wanna have it running on this machine. So. Um, from here, I'm going to start figuring out mounts. I found this mount still had with it, and I lucked out on this one. Hole to hole is 24 and a half, which is going to shoot right through the bottom of this um, same distance on that transmission mount. I just got to cut off this tail section of it and probably do some other mounts on here so I can bolt it up to it. So I can use that transmission mount for the bottom. I'm going to have to figure out some mounts up here, but um, start measuring and programming. So I decided to switch plans a little bit. I decided to cut all the rear mounts for the thing on the CNC, mainly just because that one original Subaru mount hung down so low, I didn't want to sacrifice ground clearance. And I was able to just take one small piece off of that mount that bolts to the bottom of the transmission and uh, cut all the rest on here. When you have the CNC machines, man, it's so easy to cut the parts, you might as well utilize it. All right, I just found a really cool tool. I just got to try it out for the first time. It's uh, adjustable magnetic welding clamps. Uh, my buddy showed me a little ad form the other day online. I looked them up and found some on Amazon. And uh, I have those other clamps. I'll put a little picture in the description here on the side. And uh, they work really well for welding, like 90s and T-joints and stuff for bar stock. But something like this, um, this little pack is just barely over 20 bucks. It comes with two sets. And so a smaller set, a bigger set, and they hold, like here's a piece of metal here. Say you want to hold this on at a certain angle. It's kind of hard to clamp that stuff. You can put these magnets on here and you can position it however you want. And it holds it pretty well. I just used them, the bigger set on here for this uh, transmission mount. And it worked really, really well. I'll put a little link to uh, some of these useful tools down below in the description, guys. I got all those uh, transmission mounts tack welded onto here. I might put some gussets between them, but those should be good. And the bottom plate down here actually unbolts off the transmission, so you should be able to lift all the transmission stuff out for doing anything. But I had to make some slight changes to these. I had these all cut and then realized I actually had to take an inch off of this side and add it over there because I thought the nose of the transmission, the input shaft and the output shaft were in line. Turns out, it's kicked over one inch on here. So I realized that and I uh, had to make some adjustments so those mounts had to be cut differently and these ones had to be modified. I would much rather have this thing not centered in the frame because I'm gonna be running belt drive here and the motor can sit anywhere, but I really need the output shaft to be center for the pivot point. So that's why I kicked the whole thing over this way, but it's coming along pretty good. So here's a $150 Subaru. It's got new tires, so hopefully I can recoup a little cash by selling those off. And uh, tear out the running gear and turn it into the articulating dump truck, hopefully. So I figured I'd take the Subi for a little test drive, see how it goes. and Got the heater working and uh, cruising around, seems to be driving just fine. 
case you're wondering why I took three year hiatus on this project, um, back three years ago I got pretty inspired by seeing a bunch of these YouTube videos on Russian home built tractors and articulating tractor trucks. And I got the Subaru, started tearing out the engine and getting started on the project. And then my son was born and I realized I had zero time to do this kind of stuff. So it went to the complete back burner and actually sold off the transmission to a friend for a Volkswagen project. And I just bought it back recently because he hadn't done anything with it and he was happy to sell it back. And that's kind of why I'm getting started on this thing again. And uh, I'm glad I still got most of the parts. So yeah, a lot of these parts sat out on a pallet for the last three years. So these uh, wheel calipers, for instance, were stuck on here. I'm gonna have to pull them all apart and probably put new seals in them and rebuild them. So right here, I'm getting this thing freed up, pulling the brake pads are rusted on it. I'm gonna have to clean all that stuff up. And I'm gonna um, pull off the CV joint. Three years ago, I actually started working on it, as I said, and I cut the CV joints in half to shorten them up. So that's why they're separated. I'm making the measurements on here and I'm actually gonna try my attempt to uh, cut these things apart and uh, shorten them up. And I got new boots there to rebuild them. I figure if I'm gonna go this far, I might as well put new fresh uh, boots on them and repack them with grease. And here I was quite disappointed. I threw the band saw on here and walked away for a while, came back about a minute later and it may be cut into a sixteenth of an inch so i realized i was going to be working with some pretty hard metal here and i realized that the outside edge is probably heat treated to about how three sixteenths of an inch in so i got out my cutoff wheel and i was grinding this thing through and i got it on my mill and even with carbide cutting tools it was gnarly to cut through my whole idea was to do a socket and pin on here and that really wasn't working um, so yeah, this first one on the lathe was really difficult to work with. Ah, getting out the rubber glove. Uh oh, some of you guys over 40 or 50 know what that means. All right, you guys, I don't take CV joints apart every day. I had to look this up online. The other side is kind of a plunger joint and there's like a wire snap ring in there to take apart. But this side, I could tell it was blind. I wasn't quite sure how it comes off. Saw a video, they said you can um, use a brass punch. I don't have a brass punch, but I got some aluminum, so it'll be softer than steel. You're supposed to just tap down on here. All right, with that off, now we can chuck this up in the lathe and kind of make a pin and socket fitting for these two parts and weld it back together. That's about as true as I could weld this thing. I had to cut some of the tack welds off the first time and uh, straighten it out again, but I think it's gonna be good enough for this thing. I don't think it's gonna go much over 20 miles an hour. So here's round two on the other side and because I realized this stuff is so hard now, I decided to just cut it off. I wasn't going to turn on my lathe. I just took it over to my uh, big sander and sanded some 45s into it. And another thing that made this one difficult was as you see that part of the CV joint still connected. I could not pound that side off of this one so I said hell with it. And so I'm trying to weld this thing and try to make it straight and uh, just having some difficulty and trying to... Uh, Separate these welds there, pull that one back apart, reground it down again. Uh, tack weld every time, as you guys know, every time you heat something up, it bows and bends when you weld it. And so I had to grind these off a few times with the angle grinder and just kind of eyeball it. Um, because this thing's not a super high performance machine, I think I got this one pretty true, but it's probably not going to go over 20 miles an hour, so I think it's never going to be a problem. And uh, But I think on the second attempt on the rear right and left 
CV joints. I'm going to probably set them back in my lathe again because I know I can drill the centers out. The centers are not hardened and I will probably put a dowel in the centers and it will help for alignment. Put the two sides together and press them together in my hydraulic press and I think it will work pretty good. Right, I hope you guys enjoyed that video so far. I got some time off work here pretty soon, so I'm actually looking forward to getting started on the rear half of this thing and working on the, the pivot joint and the articulation joint. Actually, speaking of that, hold on, I got something cool to show you guys. Here is a bearing I got super cheap on articulatingminitrucks.com, and uh, it's a perfect bearing for the joint. They sell it on there for it, and it's gonna go right back here and allow the chassis to articulate to the terrain. No, I'm just kidding, guys. There's no articulating minitrucks.com. At least I never looked for it. Anyways, yep, I picked up this bearing for cheap the other day. And if you guys have any ideas what it came off of, leave a comment in the comment section and be interested to hear what you guys have to say. And if you have any ideas or suggestions or any questions about the build so far, mention down below in the comments. All right, until next time, take care, guys. Bye.